complex is the reallocation of road space and other demand management measures like the car parking initiatives. The HSE says it cannot guarantee safe staffing levels in hospitals in the event of a January COVID surge. Over 620 people are in hospital with COVID, an increase of over 200 in one week. Hundreds of patients have also been hospitalised with influenza and RSV. The HSE's Chief Clinical Officer, Dr Colm Henry, has this advice to anyone who has respiratory symptoms. If you're sick, stay at home. Stay at home at least 48 hours after you're unwell. That way you avoid transmitting, whether it's COVID-19 or whether it's influenza or any other transmissible disease, to someone who may become very ill. And we're advising people, it was always discretionary, but we're seeing we're saying to people on public transport in any congested settings, anywhere where you may be near somebody who's vulnerable, I think it's prudent and not much to ask for people to consider wearing a mask. Enoch Burke is being released from prison following a High Court order. It follows a hearing earlier today. Mr Justice Brian O'Moore said the only threat to Mr Burke's continued freedom would be if he again breached a High Court order. Mr Burke was jailed in early September after he breached a High Court injunction directing him to stay away from Wilson's Hospital School in County Westmeath. Legal Affairs Editor at the Irish Independent, Shane Phelan, says one of the reasons he was released was the cost of keeping him in prison. Mr Justice Brian O'Moore, um, uh, despite uh, Enoch Burke's uh, refusal uh, to comply with orders and his resistance to being released, uh, decided today to release him for a number of reasons. Uh, we're still digesting uh, the ruling here. It's quite a lengthy ruling. But uh, among the reasons that the judge uh, has cited are the draw on public resources of Burke continuing to remain in prison. And now you're up to date. It's two minutes past seven. News Talk Weather. Thanks to Ryanair. Swap the quality street for a gift they love. A Ryanair gift card. Outbreaks of rain and drizzle look likely to affect southern parts overnight, possibly extending further north into the Midlands. Mostly dry elsewhere with clear spells and a few showers. There will be some patchy frost and fog with a chance of ice locally too, especially in parts of the Midlands north and east. Lowest temperatures of minus one to plus five degrees with very light winds. And that's your weather update. More later. The News Round on Off The Ball. With Gillette, in association with Movember. Effortless shave, magnificent mo. This is News Talk. Welcome, welcome. We've got a cracking lineup on the show this evening. Brian O'Driscoll here for Wednesday Night Rugby. That will be at 8 o'clock. We have a football show featuring Jonathan Wilson, who has literally written the book on Argentinian football. He'll talk to us about, you can uh, guess what. Graham Hunter will also be on because he's Graham Hunter. Uh, is the truth there uh, back from Doha in Scotland now before that Arthur O'Dea and Mick McCarthy of Team OTB famously famously of Team OTB will pick out some sporting moments of the year their own personal highlights and lowlights from 2022 in sporting terms if we get into personal issues that will be fine too Mick hello <laughs> <laughs> Joe I'm in here I have no laptop I, I I I came in here what two minutes past seven. Yeah, uh, running around the place. I've I've forgotten my day job. I can't I've forgotten my day job because I've been looking over the 2022 year in sport, <laughs> arguing about which Gaelic football match I liked more. More on that and on, but. Uh, can't help um, but notice you're wearing enormous headphones as well. Yeah, I can't find any of the, the studio <laughs> headphones. I mean, everything's gone completely wrong because I've been trying to make a list. Uh, That's genuinely, it's the most plain, straightforward list of all time. Like, it's not your best look on air. <laughs> I, so Okay, well, we have studio headphones that someone seems to have taken, is the truth. No, it's all right, though, now that I think about it, actually, they're traditionally what radio headphones would be, big headphones. Oh, yeah, but we're, we're, we're TV. We really man. are. Yeah, we really are. Yeah. Uh, Rich McCormick, what headphones do you have on? Oof. We're not hearing you, you're hearing us. Oh. Yeah. Oh, we're here now? There we you got go. you now? We got you now? Yeah, should be, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got the crappy stringy ones, uh, uh, yeah. which I didn't nick from the studio, Mick, uh, just in case Richie, you're Richie, you're never here. You're I'd never, you'd never be the well, first true. person I'd go yeah. to. I bet the last that's person we'd that's accuse that's of that. That's true. <laughs> you never know, I could be creeping in during the night with my fob to... Use you know, the printer. The assets of the studio and to use the printer exactly because the toner is gone here. So I need to, yeah. A lot, lot of printer being used for Christmas gifts over the last few days, yeah. The, I'd imagine the, the paper count is low in the office, in offices all around the country, in fact. Well, I presume you've all had the experience of when you're printing off personal documents of some kind and you hit print and then the, you, there's the sprint to make sure no one else is at the printer. Nobody picks up your yeah. Ryanair voucher. But obviously the worst case scenario then is if the printer isn't working 
and you can't get it resolved <laughs> and you're like, well, clearly, if this is fixed and then the printer prints your the, personal document, my CV that I'm sending the, off to. The pending jobs. <laughs> Dear Declan McBennett. <laughs> I wasn't going to go specific. <laughs> Richie would have. I would have. Yeah, to be fair. Uh, that's always a scary, that's, I'll sometimes do a test print. Oh yeah, make sure everything's working. Let's make sure everything's very very care- in order. You're a very careful man, Joe. We're so <laughs> what about What about, Joe? What about if you've printed something off uh-huh. and you see one of those CVs that you're sending off to Decky McBee uh, and, you know, the printer isn't working, but it will get working later. So it's gone and basically has sat in the queue until the thing is operational That's again. What and somebody picks Sorry, it up. I, I was just saying that, yeah, there's, there is no yeah. worse feeling. I mean, I've, I've, I've camped out next to a printer on several occasions overnight. Just in case. <laughs> Waiting for Brian Keeney to come in the morning and save my life. <laughs> <laughs> As he has done to everybody in this building yeah, many, yeah, many, many times. Happy Christmas, Brian. One of the greats, Brian. Yeah, well, keeps the place yeah. working. So, um, well, Mick and Arthur are going to pick out some highlights. They're sporting highlights from 2022. We'll do that between half seven and eight o'clock. Please text in. This is not a, you know, when you open a newspaper and it's a, here is the definitive list of 2022. This is a more uh, personal version of events on their part. So by all means, text in anything you want us to mention or that merits mention. There's no point complaining afterwards. Richie, is there something we should absolutely, without question, touch upon if we're daring to touch on 2022? Oof. Um, what is numero uno? From, from uh, Off the top of my head. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, I've just sprung this on Richie, which is on me, terribly yeah. unfair. Uh, a Taylor Serrano is up there, I think. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, in terms of both occasion and the actual... It's one of those weird ones whereby... Uh, hype and the amount of waiting actually bore itself out in the event itself in that it was it lived up to expectations which doesn't really happen uh, which really happens I should say um, which is great and from a personal standpoint like I absolutely loved being in and around Morocco for those two knockout games against Spain and Portugal because um, yeah it was just special uh, to be in a country that was buying into things as readily and as openly as they were um, and it was just complete happenstance complete blind dumb luck um, and yeah enjoyed every second I was probably more nervous than a lot of the locals were especially during the Portugal match I was reading Mick Foley in the Sunday Times and there is always the worry with something like Taylor and Serrano that were being parochial yeah and that it didn't really rock the world the way we like to tell ourselves it did and yet the Taylor Serrano fight is due or expected to win four of the nine Ring Magazine awards for the fights of 2022. Mm. So it absolutely 100% uh, touched a nerve beyond Well, it was the biggest fight Serrano of the year by a mile, yeah, yeah, and best fight as well. I yeah, would say. Yeah. 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 So I think that's uh, definitely going to get a mention. 53106, get in touch, you'll get us out off the ball as well. Were you going to come in there? No, I was just going to say I can confirm that it will get a mention. It is on my list. Okay. So the news round is, as ever, brought to you with our friends at Gillette Labs for an effortless finish to your day. And we're starting with Carabao Cup. Oh, yeah, there's live ball on tonight, uh, Joe. Uh, and Manchester United back in action uh, for the first time in five and a half weeks. They take on championship leaders Burnley at Old Trafford. There's an eight o'clock kickoff there. A pretty strong Manchester United team. Uh, players returning from the World Cup included in their starting 11 uh, include Casemiro and Christian Eriksen and indeed uh, Marcus Rashford also in there is Bruno Fernandes who captains the side and there's a start in goal for Martin Dubravka ahead of David De Gea who is on the bench for Burnley Josh Cullen starts in the centre of their midfield and they also have Luke McNally on their bench. Tonight's other ties both kick off at 7.45. Brighton are away to Charlton. Evan Ferguson and Andrew Moran are on the bench for the Seagulls. Uh, and Nottingham Forest are away to Blackburn, for whom Sammy Schmodix starts up top. Or in, actually in midfield. But yeah, Sammy Schmodix starting for, uh, for Blackburn tonight. I'm just not ready for this. I will get there by Stephen's Day, no problem. Yeah, I'll be all over the football over Christmas. But the thought this evening of a post-match interview with Eric Ten Hag is disturbingly grim. I never... It's a very strange thing to say that a Manchester United game feels small time. Yeah. Because it isn't. That's unfair. Like, I mean, I know it's the Carabao Cup and so on, but it's just... I think it's far too oh, soon. No, we can't. are just not conditioned for it. No. You know, we talk about the sporting calendar a lot, actually, and how much it just influences the way we watch sport. But it's like to have competitive club football three days 
two days actually, even last night after the the World Cup final, it it just messes with the senses completely. I can't say I care. Look, I mean, I think you're right because I think Christmas, you expect top notch Premier League football the day after Christmas. Yeah, that's what we're used to. Christmas will be a more of a factor in our lives than the World Cup final from a week before, and we'll get into it and we'll be fine. It's all this week thinking about clubs. Look at the like. I honestly just I was just in a meeting earlier today, and there was a load of the tabloids just uh, thrown on the table. And I just I'm always just flicking through, and it's like back page City, back page United, back page Liverpool. And I'm like, what is going on? Who are these teams? Oh, Mick, 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 just wait. We've got another couple of weeks until the transfer window uh, brushes itself oh, open. I'll be fine by then, though. I'll yeah. be fine by then. I won't care about Argentina and France and all. But right now, I'm like, God almighty, I don't need to see Manchester City players in Christmas suits or whatever it was. <laughs> Promise me this now, Michael. Yes. Manchester United lose 5 0 this evening. If you have Andy Mitten on the show tomorrow to do a United in Crisis piece, then I just give up. <laughs> uh, I'm going to let Arthur produce well. tomorrow actually I've got too much to do before Christmas so <laughs> that's his call <laughs> uh, there's a text in from Brian no surname could be Keevney don't know could be O'Driscoll uh, Joe welcome to 2022 it's a sarky start to the message I'll give you that uh, he says when you print something though you can pick secure print whereby you have to input a four digit code in the printer before it prints Ooh. do ours have that? No one knows. The problem with they that is you'd have to learn how to yeah. use the printer as well as your computer to get to the printer. And I don't think you're the greatest at that. I mean, I think you're you're very much a kind of a... Does that computer print? Does that computer print? Mm-hmm. What's going on here? Yeah, I'll pick and um, choose what I spend my time learning. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> that was a pretty sarky response. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't think you want to add a layer of complication to the whole thing. Well, secure print sounds intriguing to me. Own ask, what will the atmosphere be like in the PSG dressing room between Messi and Mbappe post World Cup? I think fine. Yeah, these things are always fine. I think game respects game. This would be like Shane Walsh and David Clifford rocking up and saying, "Look, we were both amazing." Yeah, I think it might be I, slightly different if. Uh, sorry, Mick. I think it might be slightly different if Emmy Martinez was in that Paris Saint Germain <laughs> dressing room and he had to confront uh, Kylian Mbappe. That's a different story. Well, yeah, so uh, what's happened Messi's here? I, I, I saw a headline: Martinez, the goalkeeper, has been accused of mocking Mbappe. He, ha- he had he was... a uh, on the was it the open open, yeah, on the bus, open top yeah. bus tour? Yeah, uh, he had a little baby doll. Uh, over which was the face of Kylian Mbappe. I'm not sure if it was crying or not, but it certainly was a representation of Mbappe being an Mbappe, as uh, uh, one John Jaws might call him, yeah. Not since Carlos Tevez uh, had Alex Ferguson or IP or something, was there been an open top bus? Yeah. <laughs> like uh, Emmy Martinez, as much as I love him, and his uh, S. Housery, I'm cursing too much in the news, I'm going to try and uh, tone it down a little bit. Yeah, you went uh, off on one yesterday. As much as uh, I love it all, he's coming across as a massive baby this week. Uh, not, a, not, not a very good winner so far. Mm-hmm. Um, ah, yeah, like, I mean, some of that stuff is silly, like, you know, but... What was the... So, Philippe Clare certainly pinpointed him throwing the ball away during the shootout. Is oh, that, he was terrible during the shootout. Did you not see any of that? No, I, I love that. I did a bit. I just think all is fair and love more, no? Yeah, I fine. I don't, I don't have yeah. a problem with it. I told you, I said I, I, I love it in some ways. But then again, if I think if I was cheering for France or if I was French, I'd be pretty angry. With it. But look, that's what he's trying to do. Yeah. I mean, he did the exact same thing. Like, he basically made Yerry Mina cry in the Copa America final. That's almost what made him famous. Oh, you know? And then. Pass me by. Oh, yeah. There was a whole big thing there. Like, and then, like, I mean, he is the ultimate. Uh, uh, game player, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because he did uh, obviously draw significant attention for his celebration with the golden hoof <laughs> and uh, dignitary looking on, less yeah. than impressed. So what did you think of that? So my initial thought was, oh, Emmy, for feck's sake. Like, you just said you wouldn't curse. Feck isn't a curse, is it? Well, I don't think we're allowed to no, say on the radio. Not. Apologies, everyone. Are we not? Do you want to explain ah, to the kids in the car repeating it now to everyone? Well, you've, maybe you've drawn attention to it now, Joe. But like, <laughs> Don't laugh if they, do, they say it. That's the big thing. Anyway... Emmy, what are you doing yeah. to that picture of the screen grab and your man looking on? It just it went to a whole new level of funny mm. and worth it then, you know? So, I don't know. Depends on what your perspective is, I suppose. I didn't really... I, I would like to have seen the context of that photo. Did you not see the live, him doing it live? No. It was odd screen. Like, he no. literally went up, got the golden glove or whatever it's right. called. Kind of a bit of a monstrosity of a trophy. Yeah. And then just, yeah, put it to his... Went into the position of the photo. Did a trust, yeah. 
Right. With a bit of a city face on him. And it was like, oh, man, <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> this, is, this is your moment. You've just been named goalkeeper <laughs> in the World Cup. You just kind of, it's like, why? What made you do he was that? Asked like, about, you know? He was asked about it afterwards. He says, I did it because the French booed me. Pride does not work with me, that he told make... Argentine radio station La Red. Doesn't He's an emotional sense. character, Martin. doesn't make any sense. Even the way he did doesn't don't. make sense. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I <laughs> don't want to analyse why it doesn't exactly, make sense. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Just... I don't know. I'm, I'm wary of what I'm allowed to say and not say now as well. So so we'll push on. The Republic <laughs> like of Ireland. Mick. Yeah, the Republic of Ireland. They've announced a friendly. This is a few days before the French game. Yeah, we should mention, by the way, that uh, Arsenal are in Women's Champions League action at the moment. They are going to top uh, Group C because they're 8-1 up away to Zurich with uh, 17 and a half minutes to play in Switzerland. The other game in that group still goes between Lyon and Juventus. But as you mentioned there, Joe, yeah, the Republic of Ireland will warm up for the start of their European Championship qualifying campaign with a friendly at home to Latvia, the Baltic nation, visiting the Aviva Stadium on March 22nd, five days before Stephen Kenny's side take on France in their first qualifier. Ireland have won all five of their previous encounters with Latvia, the most recent of which came under Martin O'Neill in 2013. Martin O'Neill's first match show, we were there, I believe broadcasting from the Aviva Stadium that night. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In a, watching it from a nice corporate box, not the greatest atmosphere, I would say, in the world. Was it 3-0, Richie? 3-0, yeah. I think Robbie Keane got the first one. I can't remember who got the others. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was a handy enough win. For the O'Neill and Keane era. It was 2013. And all the promise to come. Ivan Yates was hanging around that box that evening for some reason. Uh, he would be, yeah. That sounds about right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a text in, uh, Mick, watch your language. You are a disgrace. Sorry. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to be, you know, seen as the, the language guy. You wouldn't get away with that across the UK. Uh, well, we're not in the UK, Joe. No, I know that. Yeah, but just years a, ago, something happened. As a corresponding broadcasting culture, they take it too far. They're under uh, uh, like it's it's uh, pan- panic station. Post, I grew up listening to the Jerry Ryan on they, the radio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you could say post, post watershed when they apologise <laughs> for stuff that was half heard on field mics is just yeah that's beyond, beyond. Yeah. yeah 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 Shane Larry hits a bad shot yeah doesn't even say what Michael McCarthy would consider a curse word it's <laughs> quarter to 11 on a Sunday night and it's we, we yeah, apologise apologize for that and that, yeah. that's not their own sensibilities that's the watershed the, isn't the that's issue the, there that's though. the broadcasting yeah. authority there is just so strict but people what I always think is just a, a misconception there is that the watershed isn't the issue it's the programming so Sports program would be considered general, all viewing audience. Doesn't matter what time of day that's yeah, on. Yeah. If you break those the rules of that particular, sure, uh, whatever. But it still seems it still seems particularly OTT. Oh yeah, it's ridiculous. But I'm saying nice. that's why they do it. Yeah. You wouldn't last out there. I I could just not do it. <laughs> yeah. Be well able. I don't I don't use certain words. True. <laughs> uh, Johnny Cohen has uh, yeah. called time exceptional career yeah absolutely he says he's forever grateful for his time on the Galway hurling panel the versatile Lock Ray man has announced his intercounty retirement after 12 years on the Galway squad Cohen was deployed in midfield for the 2017 All-Ireland final win over Waterford and he also helped the tribesmen win two league titles and two Leinster championships Johnny Cohen is one of those players Joe that will never get enough credit he'll never be kind of seen as the top five or six players on a county team but he's there for 12 years as Richie says you know would have been kind of in many times he'd be the type of player that they'd go back to when things weren't working out you know he was that kind of player he was the guy who set up Joe for that point in 2017 his work is like kind of uh, dogged work on the sideline that knocks it back to Joe probably the most famous hurling point of all time that type of player people won't remember that he was involved in that they'll remember the Joe Canning moment and rightly so this isn't a a mark against the great flashy players either but you need Johnny Cones to set up what Joe Canning's done and it's it's right that you'd celebrate a career like that when he announces retirement Okay, very good Uh, Sham Crowers, Richie they're not here to take part uh, no, they're not. No, they're set to raid Women's National League champion Shelburne for four players. Shells confirmed that Abby Larkin will be leaving the club less than a fortnight after announcing that she'd be staying for 2023. The Republic of Ireland International appears destined for Rovers with Shelburne teammates Amanda Budden, Shauna Fox and Jess Gargan set to join her. Rovers return to the WNL next season after a seven-year absence and they've already signed Anya O'Gorman, Stephanie Roach and Melissa O'Kane. There was also a deleted tweet uh, from Shelburne today which was alluding, it seems, to the departure of Larkin and others uh, that was uh, obviously, as I say, since deleted. So uh, Shamrock Rovers... uh, 
I guess gathering of their squad for 2023 is not going down well in some circles. I was ju- well. I was going to ask Richie at, at what point has this crossed over from being a very, very, very welcome injection of money into the women's league to a negative story? Well, it was to a degree. This was always going to happen because if you add a an existing entity into the league, which is already a, a pretty small league in and of itself. It's only available talent pool for the best possible players is the women's national league. So it's natural that they will go for uh, their competitors, uh, which they're their immediate competitors. And um, so I absolutely understand that. I think uh, I, I think where the, the issue would arise, perhaps, is is the Larkin issue. If she had committed to stay for 2023 and has decided to go, that is an issue because obviously Shelburne clearly never got it in writing. Um, one would suspect because uh, otherwise, why would she be leaving? And secondly, it just shows the ambition, I guess, of Rovers and they know exactly what they're looking for and they've got a really good manager, it seems, in there too to to look after them for next season. They're going to be a force from the off. And that, I think, is what has people rattled because we've had P-Mount and Shelburne and Wexford Youths being up there and Athlone challenged them last season. Mm-hmm. But those are the main three. Uh, to have somebody break into that uh, upper upper bubble is going to be... Um, it's going to be it's going to make for interesting watching, I'll put it that way. It's just an odd one, isn't it? It's like unparalleled I can't has this ever happened before in certainly in a sport that we're aware of or follow like where a team will come in it's almost like an expansion team in American sports yeah. but they will have very specific rules in the types of leagues they are as to what kind of players they'll get or what kind of drafts they'll be able to have but in this case it's like team comes in out of nowhere takes pick a Shelburne's players pick a P-Mount's players I know they definitely have at least one of that loan's best players and it's like you're it's yeah. forming a super team almost at yeah. the expense of the teams that were there doing it. I, I'm not for or against it. I just, I, I find it very strange. I've never seen it before. I feel like there's got to be an example, but maybe you're right. I The, the closest I can remember in, t- in terms of domestically anyway would be something like, it's not at the same level, I don't think, as when uh, the Dublin City slash Sporting Fingal project whereby they were essentially parachuted in. We didn't really need another Dublin team in the league and they were buying and getting all available players. Um, but I don't think there's been anything recent to kind of occur to this. No, mm, that was like Tony Sheridan level probably past his best, wasn't it? Yeah, like it's, yeah, yeah it's still yeah. like it was, yeah, yeah, it's a fair point. But PSG founded in 1970, but it's still, I don't think they uh, walked into proceedings with yeah. a bang like that. They've, they've been a, not a big club like they are now, but they've been a big French club all of our lives. Mm. You know, like I remember Jean... Jean Marie Pap, 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 what's Jean Pierre Papin. Pierre Papin. I knew I had that wrong. Yeah. Uh, playing for them, like you know, in the nineties, like so they were. They're certainly always were. A I think side. The, the one that uh, sprung to mind there was somebody like an Angie a Makachkala. Do you remember them? They had a few quid behind them in Russia for a few years because of a, a wealthy benefactor, and were signing everybody and for big money as well. I think Chris Samba left Blackburn for them. He was one of their big signings for a stupid amount of money. Uh, and they look like they were going to be that kind of team, but yeah. that's the closest. Maybe it's City and Chelsea, like yeah, you know, it's, it's probably they're not necessarily cleaning out all the rivals because they're probably <laughs> they're just in a stronger position than the likes of Shelburne and Piedmont would be. Bigger, but bigger talent pool to pick from. Yeah, uh, thanks, Mick. Says Aiden ninety one. The kids are crying now. <laughs> oh, no. You made children cry. That's you want to check your Class. parents, your parenting there. <laughs> Don't put it back on Aiden. I will. <laughs> <laughs> that's unbelievable. So, we are staying domestic football? Yeah, striker Ethan Varian has joined Cork City on loan from Bohemians for the 2023 season. And Sligo Rovers have made Nando Pineacre's loan move from Rio Ave a permanent one. The New Zealand international made 36 appearances for the Bitter Red in all competitions last season. Uh, the all Ireland Club football semi-finals are going to be played as a double header at Croke Park. Kilmacud Croaks will play Karen's O'Reilly's in the first of those games on Sunday, January the 8th. That will have a 1.30 throw-in and it will be followed by the meeting of Glenn, of Derry and Go is Moy Cullen and that is due to throw in at half past the three. Okay. Uh, interesting new pilot scheme on the rugby front. Yeah, this had been mentioned in dispatches. I think um, David Nussifor had spoken about this in his end of year briefing uh, a few weeks ago. The RFU confirming a combined provinces 15 will compete in a pilot women's Celtic Challenge tournament. The competition will involve one team each from Ireland, Scotland and Wales playing home and away fixtures over a six-week period from the end of January. The combined provinces 15 will be overseen by Irish coaches Greg McWilliams and John McKee and will be comprised of contracted 15s players and club players under consideration for the Six Nations. It's intended to provide high-quality rugby in preparation for the Six Nations and the ambition of all involved is to launch a six-team tournament 
with two teams from each country in 2024. Wow, that's great. I mean, if that catches on, that could be a complete game changer for all concerned. And a dearth of high quality rugby is the big issue for the Irish female players. So, um, well, hopefully that catches on the way they they hope. You could see it working. Six team tournament, two teams from each country. That's mm. a, a potentially about the right uh, depth to launch with. League, yeah. yeah, exactly. Darts, meanwhile, it is the season. Oh, absolutely it is. And Josh Rock says there's more to come from him after he eased into round three at the PDC World Arts Championship today. The Antrim youngster beat Callan Rids by three sets to nil and has set up a meeting with Nathan Aspinall on Tuesday. Rock doesn't believe he even played to his full potential today. I'm happy about the win, but Callan didn't play his game and I still haven't played my game yet in this stage. That's quite scary, though. So you're saying there's more to come from Josh Rock in this tournament? I know there's more to come from Josh Rock. That when you stand up on that stage, obviously there's different pressure on you. You have to learn to deal with it. But at the same time, Callum didn't play his game, and I didn't play my game. Uh, heartache though for Cork's John O'Shea who threw away a 2-0 lead to lose 3-2 to Darius Labanowskis. Tonight's session sees Limerick's Willie O'Connor take on Gabriel Clements of Germany and three-time champion Michael Van Gerwen goes up against young Welsh qualifier Louis Williams. So uh, last story or two, I know you have Christopher Vivelle as the new technical director mm. at Chelsea. Also Eddie Jones has been speaking I and mean, before that uh, uh, crazy kind of story coming from Benelon Rugby. Yeah, we'll get to the Benetton one first, I guess. Uh, Benetton have apologised after a racist incident at their own secret Santa event. Guinea-born prop Sheriff Traore was given a rotten banana as part of his present and went public with the issue on Instagram. Benetton say they condemn any racist incident, but they didn't make any mention of an investigation into it. Meanwhile, Eddie Jones, you mentioned, speaking publicly for the first time since his sacking as England head coach, the Australian relieved of his duties last week following a disastrous autumn in which they won just once and that against Japan, where Jones is for the time being. Steve Borthwick was installed as Jones' successor earlier this week and speaking on BBC Radio 4's Today Show earlier this morning, Jones said he had no regrets about his time in charge and that he wouldn't have done anything differently. Yeah, nah, not at all. Not at all. Look, there's, there's always judgments that you reflect back with the, with the value of hindsight. But in the moment, the decisions I made, I, look, I thought I was coaching well, mate. You know, I was, I was sacked in 2005 from Australia and I wasn't coaching well. You know, when I look back now, I don't, I don't, don't feel like I was coaching poorly at all. I thought I was catching well and that's the only thing I can control, mate. And, I, you know, the thing that pleases me is that the number of players that have come out and endorsed that um, and they, and particularly for players to say that now where they get they can gain nothing from that from doing that, you know, it probably, probably makes me reflect that I was catching pretty well but sometimes the results don't go your way, mate, and you pay for it. <laughs> Uh, he's just interesting though, I love he? listening to Eddie Jones <laughs> I, I really his, like him <laughs> I love his uh, his cadence and every the way uh, oh. just the way he talks the, the, the word Cheka. mate just used I Michael Checa had that too that Australian thing it's just very oh, charming it's amazing it's amazing and it's like the word mate is just so perfectly used in every way and uh, yeah his, <laughs> I think he was coaching well from what I heard there but yeah I don't know I'm going to miss him oh, big time. I am going to miss him I'm going to miss rooting against him but at the same time I think that's literally just because he was England coach. I think I'd like him anywhere else, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Joe, can Mick say drink and arse to complete the evening script? Go on, says Alan Blackrock. Oh. Well, you might as well. I mean, the evening's gone to hell anyway, Alan, so don't actually, don't. I'm not a puppet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are pretty much done. Any other business? Yeah, I just wanted to mention one thing, Joe. Um, Franco Harris uh, died today. He was 72. Uh, he was a member of the Pittsburgh Steelers team that won four Super Bowls in the 1970s. Um, he was the running back in that team. People who watch that, you know that America's game, that yeah. brilliant uh, Super Bowl retrospective that they do, um, NFL Network, people will see it on Sky. He was one of the stars of one of the early ones of them. He's just a gentleman. But he's most famous for a, um, a, a play that they called in America the Immaculate Reception. Uh, which actually got <laughs> things going on that uh, run. It was, it, it was the Steelers' first playoff win. Right. They're losing time up against the Raiders. Ball gets thrown by Terry Bradshaw, the quarterback. It bounces off the receiver who he's going for his head. Franco Harris, heads up play to end all heads up plays, keeps his eye on the ball, catches it and makes a 60-yard touchdown run to win the game for the Steelers, their first playoff win. They didn't win the Super Bowl that year, but they would go on to win four Super Bowls, probably the best American football team of all time, or certainly one of the top two or three. 
And uh, yeah, Franco Harris always came across as one of those gents. So sad to see that he died today. It was the anniversary of that. It's the anniversary of that this week as well. And they were going to retire his jersey as part of the celebrations of that oh, well, uh, anniversary too. Time, so it's yeah, uh, yeah it's, uh, it's woeful time. I, I presume, maybe it's a stupid question, they, Bradshaw doesn't throw it off a person's head deliberately. <laughs> that's, that's not part of the that's, play. That's next Terry level. Bradshaw that's was a wild head. character, but I don't think that thing's... Ma- okay. Maybe in the future that's something they could do where a guy right. could run, bounce off the head, this is going to hit this guy's head, you're the only one going to be paying attention because that would be genius. Now this was just, he this was just Harris okay. playing the ball. Uh, but it's also just, it's just the, the look of it, the drama, the fact that it was mm. with time up just made it and the fact that it was this huge playoff game just made it probably one of the most famous plays in NFL history but Harris's career beyond that like I mean he had 12,000 rushing yards that he went on one four Super Bowl he was the linchpin the key offensive player in that team that goes down as one of the most famous ever so um, yeah look it's a sad day Okay that is the news round for this evening Richie thank you Nice and that's Michael staying with us we're going to be chatting through uh, his and Arthur's sporting moments of the year in just one second All you need for Christmas News Talk's Christmas Cash Machine. We had a big winner on Tuesday. Somebody missed her call today, so there is a rollover. If you've entered since 5 o'clock Tuesday, you're still in to win, but you need to know the new number, which is 50,000.